That's later. Yeah. No, I lost it. Oh. Maybe he has Rogers because Rogers was not yeah. <laughs> yesterday at all. Yeah, so hello people while we're <clears throat> while we're getting joined here. And uh, for those of you who presented and everybody who's joining, thanks for agreeing yeah. to stay for the happy hour. I know it's <clears throat> it's late. <laughs> and many of you who are who are joining the, the happy hour and then joined the, the, the main dialogue didn't get a get didn't get a chance to to speak. So we hope this will be a little bit more of a of an open, open discussion. Uh, you're welcome to um you're welcome to tell us about any 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 updates, any information you want to share. And like I said earlier, you're welcome to volunteer for various collaborations that have been mentioned. What I how I thought we would start though is just to give a couple of <clears throat> main points that we received from the from the dialogue itself. Um, recurring messages, open questions, um, things that, that that need to be done. Um, I think there's a and I'll say I'll, I'll say a few, and Jessica can, can say a few, and if if uh, um, anybody else can just give a couple of main points, and that can start the the discussion. What I found as a as a recurring message is the the link to international standards, uh, CIA accounts, uh, SDG 14. In fact, that was how. We got into it in, in SCAP, the, the, the statistics offices were asking how they could contribute to statistics on SDG 14. Um, another point is how that the, the pilots are really necessary to inform the theory, even though SIA Ocean and the, the manuals are, are working you know, on a conceptual basis, we really depend on testing and, and research in pilots to, to inform that. Um, we've had some good success on the pilots and the ones reported today are are contributing to this um, knowledge transfer. And <clears throat> I guess the, the, the message that came through, through from Celeste's discussion and was actually mentioned again by, by Jake was how do we work with local and indigenous communities not only to use their their knowledge to, to take take advantage of the vast knowledge and historical knowledge that they have but also how can we simplify what we're doing with ocean accounting so that it's 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 useful to them as well so we need to to reach a common ground and i think celeste is establishing a good good baseline for that those are some of my points jessica you're on mute there I have I have a laptop that's ultra sensitive to anything I do, so I'm, I've been having a few issues. Um, I I found it very interesting to see that I mean a lot of countries are facing the same challenges, the difficulties I've had putting together data. I'm I'm seeing from other countries as well, so I'm kind of relieved that it's not just Canada that has these issues, but also seeing the different directions that other countries are going. Um, I find it quite inspiring and it's it's giving me ideas on, on ways that maybe we can make progress um, with our ocean accounts as well. So uh, I, I found it a really interesting three hours and um, especially some of the, for instance, the indigenous knowledge, which is something that there is so much of in Canada, but is really underutilized in what we're doing. So um, it's certainly an interesting thing to think about how to bring that into the ocean accounts. Oh, I'm getting all kinds of pop-ups on my screen. <laughs> You're muted, Michael. Just noticed. Um, we're going to try to run this fairly, fairly informally. That um, if if you'd like to speak, put your put your hand up. But uh, any of the 
any of the moderators and speakers maybe could 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 start with with some of the the, the main points that they found they found interesting and we could uh, you know like I said just to just to start the discussion there so um, go ahead any any volunteer I just got flipped out of the out of the out of the the room here. Um, <laughs> so, Francois, how are you doing? Are your your connections working? Maybe you could say a few words. Hi, I was uh, yeah, I was kicked out as well uh, after having difficulty joining, but happy to be here. Um, I thought it was. Uh, extremely interesting. I, I sent a few tweets out uh, to that effect. A few things that um, stuck with me is are, are the following, you know, the, the knowledge coevolution, um, what, what Celeste uh, Di Giovanni was uh, talking about, um, that we need to work on integrating Western science with Indigenous knowledge, uh, the peanut butter and jam <laughs> image. Um, that is something that I for sure am uh, totally um, backward on. I got to get going. And certainly that's that's one big thing that I, uh, I, I take out of this meeting. Uh, and also what Lawrence uh, McCook said earlier on that it, not it, it, the extent of our ignorance about the impact of deep sea activities is 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 high. Uh, and in this case, as in many other cases, the precautionary principle must prevail. So the, the lack of knowledge for, for is no excuse for denigrating um, the obvious impact, even though it's not measured. So that's also something that I, I think the accounts have to, to look into. And, and, and finally, uh, although Jake had a bit of difficulty to, to join the talk, I think what he said was extremely interesting. Uh, about the importance of cultural diversity, um, uh, considering control, integrated cultural diversity as, as a, a means, a necessary means to, to protect and, and, and enhance biodiversity in the accounting process. I thought these three things were particularly uh, important. Thanks, Francois. Any, any other questions, comments? Yeah, I can jump in here. Um, Thanks. Yeah, just just build on what Francois said. When, well, if if we look at the whole ocean accounting as 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 we always say that this is policy driven, this is demand driven, but but as other area of statistics, at some point, um, we would we would we would see or we would like to also see that that this accounts we will also drift we also drive demand uh, for for more data and and for more integrated policy as we as, as we show um, connections between different um, areas in 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 this broad framework uh, this, this is another point that we, we we might not emphasize enough that uh, it's, it's so difficult enough for initiating the first Pilot, uh, but we also need to keep ambition of of us as as a data champion to, to tell policy people uh, community on what they want to focus or need to focus next uh, before before the problem actually come and uh, unprepared. No, that's a good point there, Tirapong. That. Uh... It's an interesting role of the National Statistics Office and that um, this is kind of one, one approach that we're always taking as Statistics Canada. We're always a few steps ahead of policy demand that we weren't necessarily that demand driven, um, even though we did react to demands, but we were always prepared. So there'd be there'd be years when we weren't actually asked for anything, but we would we would be prepared with the with the SIA accounts with with environmental indicators with the, the the geospatial database, and when the demand did come along for those, we were we were ready. That's one of the reasons that Statistics Canada always has a fairly high rating in terms of 
effective statistical agencies. It's not easy for everyone to do, but I've noticed a lot of statistical agencies are are reactive, that someone needs to ask for something and then they will do their best to prepare for it. But I think this is a, an opportunity to be kind of proactive and, and be ready for these, these demands. Can I jump in, Michael? Please. Okay. For me, uh, the interesting uh, is a comment from uh, GP, uh, which is, uh, he asked about the delineation about on ocean or coastal activities and the terrestrial activities. Um, I think in the technical guidance also, there is two paragraphs that uh, mention about the scoping of ocean or coastal activities. But the, these uh, two paragraphs are, uh, one is too loose, which mean that uh, the technical guidance uh, mentioned the scoping of ocean or coastal is 100 kilometer inland. And one paragraph mentioned uh, about the activities related to ISIC, uh, ISIC uh, which is, uh, closely related to economic activities that uh, related to ocean. So I think uh, the technical guidance in, uh, in the GoUp website is not very clear uh, about the scope of uh, ocean or uh, coastal uh, activities in this regard. Well, yes, you're, you're, you're right that it doesn't go into, into a lot of detail, but we try to develop the principles that um, it's, it's not necessarily 100 kilometers inland, but it, it can't be 100 kilometers if the land is lower than, than 50 meters. I think that's, that's a standard that had been adopted elsewhere. And the reason for that is that you have, you have effects of the ocean for, for flooding and sea surges and hurricanes at that, at that level. And we need to agree on what that, what that extent is. Uh, certainly we, often need to make the point, the point that we are including coastal and marine. So it goes out not only to a country's exclusive economic zone, but also into international waters. And I've been lobbying for some large international organization to start working on, a, on an ocean account for international waters. Um, on the economic side, the, the, the scope is 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 not precise because so many different countries and and researchers are using different scopes. So we've been trying to engage a um, ocean economy satellite accounting working group before COVID to actually agree on some some basic starting points for countries who are who are doing this rather than following um, one country's or one person's um, standard for what those. Uh, economies are, what those economy sectors are. And I hope that's something that we could look at a bit more closely in the in the Sea of Ocean to start to standardize that satellite ocean economy accounting that um, the OECD has been working on and, and certainly have their fairly broad perspective on, on everything. So that's that's a very good starting point. Can, can I jump in here? I, Airborne, so, yeah. I, I can't I can't fly Press my hand, cut up button. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, they, yeah, yeah. In in technical, uh, in relation to this ocean economy satellite accounts, and um, in the technical guidance, we have a a definitional concept, right? And and one 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 of them being being about activities that that physically close to to the ocean or 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 or, or the shore. Then in in Thailand we have issue with that uh, in terms of oper operational op uh, operationalized this concept. Then we kind of the the, the Department of Coastal and Marine Resources kind of uh, were inspired by the OHI that they try to uh, narrow down this concept to the place close to the ocean that you can still have the sense of place. Uh, and and in, in that sense, if for instance, if you have a restaurant, 
uh, on the top of the mountain that you can see the ocean, then you benefit from the ocean. But but if there's a restaurant behind that restaurant that you don't see the ocean, then then that that's out of the scope. Uh, is 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 not is is well like like we know that we have to define something black and white uh, for for measurement purposes. Uh, but but if if we look at the the whole concept of 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 the ocean economy that benefit from or take something for the ocean. So in terms of proximity to, to the ocean, then they, they use the sense of place as a, as a condition. No, I don't wanna spend all of our time talking about ocean economy satellite accounting, but the, um, the, the basic principle is that it's not only activities that occur on the ocean, but occur activities that benefit from the ocean. So it could be that mountaintop restaurant, or activities that contribute to the ocean. So it could be land-based um, boat manufacturing that contributes to the, to the ocean. So we try to, to include that distinction as well. And so the ocean economy could be, could be fairly broad as long as we distinguish between those, those different components. I think Alessandra wanted to say something. Alessandra. Yeah, hi. No, I, I just wanted to react a little bit to what uh, um, Echi is saying and this idea of uh, uh, developing this classification. So um, I think that there is an opportunity because uh, um, ISIC is uh, currently being uh, revised. Um, and also, uh, and CPC will also um, be revised, I think, by uh, the revision will start in 2022. So I think that there will be an opportunity to look at this alternative aggregation and, uh, and formalize a little bit more what, what are the activities related to ocean, what are the activities, for example, related to forest um, and so on. So um, I think we should uh, um, engage into this, uh, these processes to, <clears throat> yeah, to, 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 to add, uh, basically to be a little bit opportunistic. I think that if we have a proposal it will be, um, I mean, it will be considered by class the classification groups. And I think, uh, um, and also because I, I mean, I didn't have the time to say that, but we are now in the context of the ecosystem accounts discussion, we are reorganizing all these groups, focusing primarily on implementation, but uh, um, I think that it would be useful that, um, I mean, we there will be also some substantive discussion on uh, advancing the methodologies and in particular, for example, identifying what are the, rel um, the relevant variables to measure for, for ecosystem conditions and uh, looking at the units uh, side So um, and measuring uh, ecosystem services. So I think that we can also <clears throat> engage in these processes to, to advance the, uh, the research agenda on ocean. Yeah, thanks for that, Alessandra. I think we've had some um, queries, maybe not full volunteers to involve, to engage in the, uh, the SEA ocean process. And um, as you say, it's a matter of joining a working group and, and one Example we can we can take from from this as an inspiration is is how the SIA ecosystems working group operated over the last couple of years and 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 people would um, get together in smaller groups and write position papers and then get together as a as a larger group to discuss those position papers and and eventually they would become chapters of uh, of SIA ecosystems now near final and, 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 and reaching editing phase. So um, it doesn't need to be a huge involvement of, of time, a few days here and there. Um, but again, it's an opportunity to, to participate in the process and to, and to contribute. Oh, we're quiet here. Anyone who hasn't who hasn't spoken yet, you could start with what some of your main takeaway messages are. If you don't have any particular questions, but we're happy to take questions on the on the framework on on the Sea Ocean process or 
um, implementing pilots. A, a lot of people are asking about how to get started with, with, with pilots. And I'd mentioned the, uh, the diagnostic tool that Tirapong had put together. And this is really your, your opportunity to um, engage stakeholders at, a, at a, initially an informal level. Like, what are your interests? What are you doing with ocean accounting? What are your, or what are you doing with ocean issues? Um, what, what are your priorities and how can statistics contribute to this? And that eventually becomes a, an, an, an assessment um, the, 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 um, sorry, the, uh, the diagnostic tool for, for all of our pilots became the, the scoping report, uh, the, that started the pilots that was discussed by the stakeholders that focused on priorities that ended up, um, in the pilots that have been, a lot of the pilots that have been announced. So essentially it, it eventually leads into a, into a proposal for your ocean accounts, but it's a great, great starting point. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Pradeel. So it's not. So my my question is not really related to what we were discussing before, but it, it's something that I took away from a lot of the the talks. That is, there's a huge focus on being able to financially evaluate ecosystem assets, ecosystem services, and flows of of um, I guess you could say um, pressures. And being able to put this in a South Africa, it's rands and cents, I'm sure like in a euro, in a dollar um, value. My, my concern, and, and, and this is something that we in South Africa are very concerned about, is that we don't want to elevate this, this exercise of valuating um, using financial metrics. Um, because in our experience, we've seen kind of perverse incentives coming from doing something like that. And it also, um, um, I, yeah, as I mentioned in my talk that we, that in South Africa, we, we have this big government initiative to expand the ocean economy and grow jobs and, and um, um, you know, the like. Within within our ocean space, but at the same time, we have to we have to um, develop sustainably. And, and there's there are already projects, unfortunately, that we know could potentially provide those jobs and create um, economies um, within the more rural and less developed areas um, along our coast. But they but these are these are projects within extremely sensitive potentially the last piece of an ecosystem type um, along the coastline. And it's, for me, um, intuitively difficult to see how um, physical accounts can compete with financial accounts and how natural systems that don't necessarily um, have a, a, an obvious um, contribution to local economies and, and the national economy can can be protected or at the very least accounted for properly in the minds of decision makers when they are being bombarded with, you know, we're gonna invest five million into building something or um, you know, that type of situation. So I'm just wanting to find out, you know, has anybody else had this kind of concern in when you know, thinking about the, the potential unexpected mm -hmm. outcomes of developing accounts, you know, whether or not these are the types of, of instances that you're also having in your situation. Yeah, just to, just to start, I'm sure everybody else has, has examples, but the idea has never been to focus only on the economic valuation that, um, but there are so many economic decisions that are being taken and financial decisions that are being taken that ignore the ocean and, and ecosystems in general, that uh, there, there's some advantage to be able to inform those saying that, you know, don't mess up the, the ecosystems that have, that have economic values to the economy. Um, but, you know, see, see, sorry. 
in C ecosystems, there's a there, there's a there's a big focus on doing the physical valuation first, and 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 including that as as part of the um, the, the the trade offs and the argument. So if you're losing a unique ecosystem, that's that's very important. But also as uh, as others mentioned in the in the dialogue, that it ends up being a a cultural decision that if 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 there's a culture of focusing on the economy only, then then that might be your only your only in in box you're only in route to the to the to to to, to affecting those decisions but in countries that are more um broadly environmental economic culturally oriented then you have a broader set of arguments um i'm sure others have have something to contribute to that as well Well, in, in the absence of, of uh, others commenting, maybe just read here what Michael just said. I think it's a, it's an interesting way of looking at it. If the only way to get to decision makers is to talk about uh, the, the, the economic account, then that may be the, the wedge or the foot in the door to allow them to expand, to actually discuss the, the value of ecosystems. Uh, and non on non-monetary terms. Um, the one example of that was, I think, the, the conference in, in Kenya uh, three or four years ago on, on, on the blue economy it was co-sponsored by Canada, nor in Japan and Kenya. And it, it took a lot of effort from, from Canada to actually have the organizers add uh, the, the concept of sustainability in the title of the conference because they were more interested in seeing how the oceans could provide for economic benefits in the short term, not considering the, the wealth of the ocean and its sustainability over the longer term. So it, it takes an effort, but if the only way to get two people is to talk dollars and cents, that's a, that's a, a, a pill we got to swallow, uh, even though it might be poisoned. Thank you, Francois. That was very well put. It is a bitter pill um, that we will probably need to swallow. Thanks. Anybody else would like to comment on one thing they, they learned or that, that uh, stood out for them uh, this morning? I have to say, I really loved, uh, Padil, your degradation maps that you produced for South Africa. I, I think that's, we've got some of that kind of thing done in Canada for land, but we're nowhere close to being able to do it for full ocean, I, I don't think. Um, but it would be it would be great to actually build up that kind of map for our, our ocean area as well. So if I can if I can just talk a little bit about what happened. Um, so what we normally do and it's really currently the only way we can do it is that we go to the different um, government departments as well as uh, members of the private sector. And we ask them for their, um, their spatial data if they have it. And sometimes it's not in a, in a spatial um, format. It'll be a document or it'll be, you know, an Excel table with coordinates, stuff like that. Um, basically just asking them where they, they operate and how most advanced set of data, I think, is the one that we get from the fisheries uh, department in South Africa. We're lucky in that they used to be part of environment and then they split into an environment and fisheries department and now they're back together. So 
that makes it a little bit easier to get access to to those sets of information and it's also been really good in terms of relationship building which has kind of been like the biggest way you know which we've been able to access data especially with the private sector building a relationship you know um, through various engagements um, and also showing them what you do with with the data that they give you um, especially for you know it opens up a lot of doors especially when they see that you know um, holding back on information is actually going to impact me negatively if they don't know where I'm operating they you know we would if, if we don't know where a sector is operating we would oftentimes say okay this is a good area for potentially a conservation area because nothing's happening there so it, the sectors in South Africa South Africa have kind of um, over the last I say I, I think maybe 15 to 20 years um, become a bit more open in terms of sharing their data but it's really just getting information from the different sectors and overlaying it um, with your different ecosystem types to to really assess um, how much of an activity is happening in any one place and how sensitive that um, area is to to that one activity or the combination of activities that's happening there. So, so um, the process itself is, is, is simple in that, you know, you just get information from your stakeholders or from your different departments um, as, as proxies for actually going out and seeing what people are doing and looking at, at the actual ecosystem and how well it's, it's, it's functioning. So I'm sure um, Canada would be able to do something similar in a very short amount of time. There's also the, the link to other activities. Um, Canada mentioned the, 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 the kind of the, the, there's a broad group on, on seagrasses and eelgrass, but also there are people working on marine spatial planning designation of marine parks. And a lot of them are looking for the same kind of information. And like Pradeel mentioned, um, you don't always know what's actually going on in these locations. So it's a matter of coordinating across these stakeholders as well. Started to do that in Canada with the uh, marine spatial planning people. Anyway, are we are we are we losing steam? I there's no need to to ask to 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 speak. Um, a small enough group at this point that people can just can just shout out here. Um, we're losing people. <laughs> um, yeah, Etchie, I'll, I'll I'll send you a copy of the 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 bibliography as well. A couple of people asked about. Um, ocean related research and it might take a few days or weeks to get the actual bibliography up on the on the uh, on the go up website but uh, I, can, I can share a copy informally a draft um, if anyone's interested there thank you michael uh, can i just say uh, i have a similar uh, situation with predel in in terms of uh, the ministries, one of the ministries uh, are focusing on the monetary term in in uh, they want to know uh, about the contribution of ocean and ocean related activity to the economy. So uh, I think uh, this is the uh, something that we we cannot uh, expect our goal is to inform about the sustainability indicators but they are just uh, they just focusing on the contribution economic contribution of the ocean and how to uh, exploit more from uh, ocean yeah Uh, so I, uh, that's why uh, the priority account they choose is uh, related uh, closely to 
economy, uh, which is uh, ocean asset. Uh, they want to know uh, the monetary value of uh, ocean assets and also uh, the flow from uh, environments to the economy and also uh, the governance of things related to ocean activities in the economy. Yeah, I think that is the sad part about this. Yeah, I think Francois mentioned that at the, uh, the Nairobi conference that the blue economy discussion was entirely about how to best exploit the ocean. And it brings up the issue of the uh, deep sea mining as well that um, I hope that our um, partners and members can scope the, the ocean accounts broad enough to, to show some of the, the trade-offs. So we know that uh, deep sea mining uh, risks some deep sea ecosystems that we hardly, hardly even know about. And uh, certainly um, increasing, increasing fisheries um, causes problems with, with, with overfishing. Um, that, uh, like I said, I think it's, it's as she said, that if our, our, our focus really is to advise on the sustainable use of the ocean and pure exploitation isn't necessarily the, 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 the best approach to that. So it's a matter of, uh, like I said, keeping the, um, the broader perspective and the, and the trade-offs in, involved uh, one paper I read on deep sea mining suggested that that the that the real incentive for deep sea mining, all of the deep sea minerals to be used for for batteries, is really a short term solution. That you know, within 10, 15, 20 years from now, we wouldn't need it at all anyway. So we're risking the uh, destruction of ocean ecosystems for a, for a short term benefit. Um, so. That, just gathering evidence, like I said, on that broader, broader scale can help inform the, the trade-offs. And when, when telling the stories, uh, it's, uh, it's important to consider bringing in tidbits of information from the other accounts that can also be very illuminating uh, stuff from the account on environmental protection expenditures, for example, or, or the plastics accounts or the just the waste accounts in general the land accounts given the impact of land on oceans and given the impact of oceans on land not looking at the opposite for example on the impact of changing ocean uh, conditions on, on on the water cycle so on the water accounts so i think with even without building a, a full suite of of ocean accounts there's already a lot of information that can be use in the world of statistics and accounting can be used to actually account for oceans to tell the story and to maybe generate more interests in, in, in developing ocean accounts that are not purely uh, in monetary terms. Yes, I agree. Uh, in the meantime, the statistic office tried to uh, develop a questionnaire that uh, show uh, information uh, about the flow from the economy to the environment. For example, the waste and the plastic uh, pollution in the coastal area. And we will uh, conduct the survey uh, in mid uh, year uh, in uh, 17 provinces uh, conducted by BPS regional office. It's not necessarily related to the ministry focus, but we will uh, develop this kind of statistic also. Everybody seems to be in the in the in the policy discussion here. <laughs> I guess we have the fewest in the science. I can see the the other the other rooms. Um, we can you, you, and actually you can you can change rooms. I was hoping we'd get some more 
okay. uh, cross fertilization between the between the rooms here. Um, some of you haven't who haven't spoken yet, Danine, Syed, Faisal. I'm not sure who XN is, but I'm sure you have something interesting to 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 contribute. That uh, again, you can start with just what some of the main points that you've that you've received, or any any questions that you might have. I call in the absence of, of further comments, perhaps we could go and, and disseminate the good news about statistics in the other groups by joining them as well. Yes, okay. Um, yes, you're welcome. You're welcome too. Um, I said we have the most people in the policy group, um, but please, yes, join the, join the other groups, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank, All right, you. thank you, everybody. We'll be in we'll be in touch about future events. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye bye.